Welcome back. I was just saying to Keith Hillier, how fit he's looking, Keith. You're looking tremendous this morning. How are you? I'm well, thanks, Bruce. Did you back uh, a winner yesterday? I finished a smidgen in front Good of him. Thanks you. to the shoe, he's an exciting hurdler. We're going to have a look at him later. He's had four hurdle starts, four wins, and the uh, collective winning margin more than 33 lengths. And trained by an 82-year-old Jim Hulahan, who's one of the treasures of Australian racing, isn't he? Absolutely, but he wasn't there yesterday. He's uh, ill with the virus and... Uh, Jim, I know you'll be watching, so good luck to you. We need you back at the track. Sure do. Wayne Wilson up in Brisbane. How are you going, Wayne? A rather low-key day yesterday, but the main race was won by a pretty special filly. Yes, she was, uh, or she is, Bruce. Uh, Mamselle Padrill, the way she won yesterday. We were a little frightened when we were going into the race that the 16 Alley may have been against her, but she overcame that. And I think there was a little bit of a bias to those horses racing a little bit deep yesterday, and that suited her. Quentin and Bosk worked it out early in the day that they should track a little bit wide on her, and it paid uh, handsome dividends in the end. Wayne, Ron Quinton, six times Premier Jockey of New South Wales, he's had a steady start to a training career. He places his horses so well. Now, this winner, uh, Mamzelle Padrill, is having only a ten start and it's a fifth win, and that's an example of uh, the way he's going about his new profession. That's right, Keith, and it's the first time that he's mentioned interstate this year, picking up the bit and charging at the leader now. Look at her go, and with 200 metres to go, she just exploded away from the opposition and put the, uh, put the issue beyond doubt in a few strides. Quentin will take her to Eagle Farm and the Winter Stakes next Saturday at Eagle Farm and he's after more black type for her there. So important for fillies and mares these days. And what about C. Winnie, one of Keith's favourites I know. She ran third, she won the race last year. She always has a big weight. Will she keep going this uh, preparation or is that it for her, do you think, Wayne? That'll be it now. Bruce Connections have decided to give her a little bit of an ease up. She's been up for a long time. There was massive support for her in that race yesterday. I think she was disadvantaged because she was racing close to the rust. Most of the winners came wide yesterday, so there seemed to be an advantage for those on the outside. So don't sack her, see winning. If she's one of your favourites, she's still one of my favourites. Stay with her and she'll come back in her next campaign and win a lot of races for us. Now, Keith, we've seen Desert Chill in Melbourne. He was going to be online for a Melbourne Cup start last spring. Uh, very impressive in the, in the uh, a fast run Brisbane Cup, wasn't he? So I didn't uh, envy your task of calling the race, Wayne, because it reminded me of a bike race where the limit markers uh, were just overhauled by a, a, a swarm of, uh, of scratch markers. That's right, that's right, Keith. They started to pack up as they came to the home turn. Uh, there was an unlucky runner in this race, Sapio. Try and identify him. He's just inside of the grey horse as they approach the corner. Mick took the option of going back for the inside, and you'll see that he gets blocked for a run here. Sapio in trouble there, and whilst he was in trouble and being held up, Desert Chill and Pratara's Bay swept to the leaders on the outside. Now, Desert Chili looks a real stayer. He's being directed towards the Melbourne Spring and a race called the Melbourne Cup, and he's going to be hard to beat because he is a dyed-in-the-wool stayer. He's getting better as he gets a little bit older, and he certainly looked convincing in this victory last Monday. There he is edging away from Fewett Chosen and Pratara's Bay on the outside, and there's Sapio up into fourth place. He's another one to watch for in the spring. I think Fewett Chosen's worth watching too because he's only a three-year-old. I think is Gay Waterhouse is going to take over the training of him. And he held on well, I thought, Wayne, because uh, Desert Chill looked like he beat him a length, didn't he? But he hung on pretty well on the fence for a three-year-old. Yes, it was a very good run by Fewer Chosen. You're right there. Gay is going to take over the training of Fewer Chosen, and he's being directed towards the Cups. He's a three-year-old now. He's going to get stronger as he gets a little bit older. So as a four-year-old in the spring, he's going to be in there in those Cup races as well, Bruce. Now, I know your mate Max will be watching, Keith, because he watches you every Sunday morning. He's mm. out for a spill, as you know, in that lush paddock that we've put him in in Sydney. He loves this castle, mate. States. It's one of his favourites. Well, he should have enjoyed the entire meeting. You've had a fabulous carnival there, Wayne, and this is one of my favourite races too. Ravada, gee, it was a good finish, Wayne, with both Donar and I sold are not far away, and I guess you could say that the first three and Shames run were all full of merit, weren't they? Yes, they were, Bruce, and there's another one in the race, probably the run of the race, a horse called Latin Quarter. Now, he can do a few things wrong, Latin Quarter, but he's got unlimited ability, and when he gets his act together, he's going to develop into a very good horse. Kidman's Cove brings them up towards the home turn. You can see that Isolde is just a little wide, but she's getting a run up into the race. She's three deep at the moment, and Shame is immediately behind her. And there's Ravada going up. Cassidy rode him very aggressively in this race from a wide alley. He pushed him up towards the leaders in the early stage, and, a, and it paid dividends for him. And we've got to give a compliment here to Brian Guy, because he's done a marvellous job with this horse. He's been in training for a long time. That's Ravada in front. Isolde coming at him. Don't it through in the middle. Lime green colours as Latin Quarter. Shame the outside, they hit it. There wasn't much in it. Ravada just held on to beat Isolde. Isolde now to be spelled. She'll spell here in Brisbane, and then she'll go for the spring in Melbourne as well. The Cox Plate is the race that they've got their eye on with her. Gee, they're aiming high for a three-year-old filly. You've got to be a surround to win a Cox Plate. Well, Wayne, in this morning, you've 
You've given us Melbourne Cup winners now, Cox Plate yeah, winners. Gonna, it's been a big carnival for you. Take my place. Remember when I used to tip them six months out? Yeah, inaccurately though. <laughs> Absolutely. Wayne's not a bad judge. Last year he said the horse to follow was Paris Lane. Well, he won the Caulfield Cup, the McKinnon Stakes, and the Cox uh, and, and the uh, second in the Melbourne Cup. So whatever Wayne says, you write it down, Keith. So Desert Chill and the other one, Wayne. Well, Desert Chill, if you had chosen, I think they're you genuine cup chances. I sold her, I think, as a, a genuine Cox Plate chance. Oh, Keith, we've got the pressure on you, Wayne. Don't <laughs> worry about that. Now, you're not going to start tipping hurdle winners to us, are you? Because you, you don't know much about that caper. Or if he does, he's a freak because they don't have them up there. What about the shoe? Uh, well, Keith... bookmakers bet five to four and punters lapped it up yesterday. This was race, an early race at Sandown. Now, you'll notice the shoe comes to the last uh, hurdle that uh, one of the battens is down. The Jumping Association might ask whether they should be put up in future because there was a gap of two minutes and three seconds and uh, it was a sort of shoe-in, so to speak, for him to slip through that gap. And it's here it comes up now. Him. Pretty impressive win. Away he goes, nothing to jump and he's home. Very good performance again. He's uh, going to be a very short prize favourite now for the, uh, for the Grand National Hurdle at Flemington. Four starts for four wins over the hurdle. Delmar, terrific run second. He's... Uh, he broke his duck as a hurdler the other day and he was placed in an Underwood stake, so he's a pretty fair old horse, isn't he? He is indeed. And the other big uh, jumping event of the day, of course, was the Australian steeplechase where Brian Constable, who won uh, on the Prince Salieri, was suspended for two months on an improper riding charge. Put his elbow out, football style, Bruce. Fair dink, have we got what, mm. two months today? Two months, yes. Well, Saliri, he's been a good horse, Saliri. So just quickly, because the Group 1 races are over for the season, and we, we thought we'd run through the horses, trainers and jockeys that had managed three. June. The most Group 1 wins from Dane Wynn and Northwood Plume, the two three-year-olds. So there's a good argument that June will be Horse of the Year. The training, dominated by Friedman and Hayes and Waterhouse, who had that tremendous run over about a six-week period. Bob Thompson through Dane Wynn and John Hawkes, particularly through his two-year-olds, and the jockeys. And good to see Simon Marshall looks like coming back from the Gold Coast with renewed vigour. He, uh, he uh, is too, Bruce, and he's looking very much to getting back in and controlling his weight. It's been a terrible problem for Simon. Recent months, in fact years, he's going to have a, another shot at it. No surprise, Damien Oliver on top there, Keith. But I guess Rod Griffiths and Wayne Harris were the, the tricks there. Wayne, uh, low-key day yesterday, but next week we're looking forward to the uh, the Big Tats Cup and the Winter Station. We'll catch you next Sunday. OK, Bruce, yes, we've got the Mercedes-Benz and the Tattersalls Cup. You're always on a lookout for a tip here, gentlemen. We'll back drum in the Mercedes-Benz next week. Got the drum. Good on you, Keith. Okay. Catch you next week. See you next week, Bruce. Good on you. Keith Hillier with Wayne Wilson. Basketball after this, and this fellow is a rising star. Kate's back with the story. There are players in the league that do what Sam does. Maybe not that nobody from Greensboro, no one from, you know what I'm saying? It's, you know, it's from New York.